Peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade. I want to pick up where I left off on the ABCs of white supremacy. I want to pick up where I left off yesterday on the ABCs of white supremacy. I want to pick up where I left off yesterday on the ABCs of white supremacy. I think I stopped around F, factitious, that racism invents lies, ideas, theories, postulates, hypotheses, philosophies. They invest as heavily in deception as righteous people invest in the truth. Racism invests as heavily in deception as righteous people invest in the truth. Racism invests as heavily in deception as righteous people invest in the truth. Those of us who received a university education those of us who received the university education, at least 50% of what you were taught was all lies. See, under racism, American, French, German, Belgium, British intelligence and education is largely propaganda because tied into everything they teach is the lie of supremacy. So whenever you have to safeguard an illusion of supremacy over and above other people, you automatically have to hide their truth. This is why black people will never be taught who they are by white people, nor should you look to be. Because in order for white supremacy to survive, the truth of African heritage must be buried because if you tell the truth of African heritage, if you tell the truth of African heritage, you automatically dismiss the plausibility of white supremacy. Because of the factitious nature of white supremacy, letter F, we are on letter F of the ABCs of white supremacy because of the factitious nature of white supremacy. They must deceive and they must deceive their victims. But not only does white supremacy deceive its victims, white supremacy must deceive its own children. They have to deceive their own children because if they do not inculcate into their children, the same narcissistic and brutal mindset that they have, white supremacy would be destroyed. So they have to make sure that their babies understand. They have to make sure that their babies are baptized in the brutality of white supremacy because if they don't prepare the next generation, white supremacy fails. The reason white supremacy is still in charge of African people. So racism is very much real. I don't know who said racism isn't real. White supremacy isn't real, but racism is very much real. I don't know where you've been living the past 500 years if you don't believe racism exists. But white supremacy has to brainwash its own children into soldiering for its existence. White supremacy has to brainwash its own children into soldiering for its existence. Let's go to letter G, global. White supremacy is global. That's why we call it global white supremacy. This is why when you hear black people, when you hear black people speak against Pan-Africanism, which is global, any Negro who doesn't have a Pan-Africanist approach to his philosophy, I don't care what the philosophy is. If there's no global approach to your philosophy as an African person, or as a member of the group commonly referred to as African people, if you don't have a global approach 
to the survival of African people, your theory, your strategy for victory is going to fail because white supremacy is completely global. There's no place on earth that is beyond the reach of white supremacy. There's no place on earth beyond the reach of Chinese supremacy, or should I say there will soon be no place on earth beyond the reach of Chinese supremacy. So if African people are going to overcome, if African people are going to succeed, if African people are ever going to resurrect our greatness, if we are ever going to rebirth the magnificence within our DNA, we have to be global as well. As Queen Mother Fannie Lou Hamer said, and she was no Pan-Africanist, but one hell of an activist. As Queen Mother P Fannie Lou Hamer said, and she was no Pan-Africanist, but one hell of an activist. As Queen Mother Fannie Lou Hamer said, and she was no Pan-Africanist, but she was one hell of an activist. Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie Lou Hamer said that no black person is free until every black person is free. Queen Mother Fannie Lou Hamer and I will be visiting the Mississippi Delta soon. I've never been to the Mississippi Delta, but I will be visiting the Mississippi Delta soon. Fannie Lou Hamer said, no black person is free until all black people are free. White supremacy is global. So whenever you talk to some of these intellectual masturbators on YouTube or the conscious community, the first question you should ask them, is your approach to solving the issues affecting African people is it global if it's not universal if it's not universal if it's not universal this is why the most honorable marcus messiah garvey called his organization the universal universal if your strategy is not universal your strategy is useless this is why a lot of the religious nationalist philosophies will never work because every African is not a Muslim. Every African is not a Christian. Every African is not a Hebrew. Every African is not a Moor. So if you're leading with an identity that supersedes race, it's not going to work. That's why Garvey built the largest organization because Garvey organized us along our natural, ancestral, biological anthropological lines he organized us based on what we are not what we belong to or what we claim to believe in any strategy that doesn't put african race first any strategy that doesn't put the african race first is a strategy that will fail. Make sure you download the new Race First audio book. It's available. I just downloaded it from Apple Books audio book. Get the Race First audio book on the Honorable Marcus Garvey by Tony Martin. Rest in paradise to Tony Martin, former minister of history for the Garvey movement. He joined the ancestors a few years ago. My first public lecture I was on stage with Tony Martin and Dr. Rinoko Rashidi. My first public lecture at an HBCU was North Carolina Central, North Carolina Central University, 2004 Garvey Regional Conference featuring Tony Martin, Dr. Rinoko Rashidi, who's also with the ancestors and yours truly, the Prince of Pan-Africanism. But it's called Race First, the ideological and organizational struggles of Marcus Garvey in the UNIA. Download the audio book. All of y'all who don't know your Garvey history, all of y'all who don't know your Garvey history, all of y'all who don't know your Garvey history, whether you on Google Play or whether you on the iPhone, go into the books, download audio books, whether you on Audible and get Race First. Race First by Tony Martin, T-O-N-Y Martin. Race First by Tony Martin. I don't push Garvey because Garvey was a prophet in the religious sense because Garvey never claimed to be divine. He let his work do his talking for him and he out organized and out succeeded everybody else 
before and after him who claim to be divine. But our, our strategy must be universal. Let's go to letter H. White supremacy is harsh. It doesn't care how you feel. And white supremacy is a historical. It's not based on truth. If you're trying to defeat white supremacy, let me take that back. You do defeat white supremacy with truth, but you will not be able to get a white person to admit white supremacy is a lie by using the truth because white supremacy doesn't operate on truth. It operates on power. I want to repeat that twice. I want to repeat that twice. This is why I don't debate white folks. Not saying I never would, but I don't like to debate people at all because I think most individuals are intelligent enough where if two individuals are reasoning with one another on a difference of opinion, anybody with normal intelligence or greater, and of course I give the intelligence test as a psychologist, anyone with normal intelligence or greater, they will be able to come to their own conclusion about who is right and who is wrong. I don't think there's a need for an argument. The reason we debate so much in the African community is we want to prove other people wrong and we want to imbibe ourselves with a false sense of superiority. The reason we debate so much in black America is we have a need to dominate other Africans. We have a need to prove other black people wrong and we have a need to imbibe ourselves with an artificial sense of superiority. In other words, because the white man has destroyed the black man and woman's self-esteem. Because the white man has destroyed the black man and woman's self-esteem. Because the white man has destroyed the black man and woman's self-esteem. We are still trying to resurrect and rescue our self-esteem from centuries of assault by white psychological propaganda. And you know what's sad about it? You want to know what's really sad about it? We sent our children to public charter schools, independent schools run by white folks. We sent our children to public charter, independent schools run by white folks so they can get their self-esteem assaulted also. Isn't that interesting? We send our children to white people in order to get their self-esteem assaulted as well. If we had our self-esteem assaulted by white supremacy, if African people have already had our own self-esteem assaulted by Europeans for 400 years, why would you send your children into schools ran by white people during the most sensitive and formative years of their existence? Why would you send your children into schools run by white people so they could also get their self-esteem assaulted? 